this might be the first time you've ever seen a test like this. Yeah. That is not at all indicative of whether you're going to get into medical school or not. Evan, welcome to the MCAT podcast. How are you? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Ryan. I'm excited to have you. Uh, since you are a new Blueprint MCAT live online instructor here on the MCAT podcast, I want to take a second and just hear about your thoughts uh, on this silly little thing we call the MCATs that gives students nightmares um, day in and day out. So obviously my assumption is you yourself have taken the MCAT uh, mm -hmm. and you've done well enough to be an MCAT, a Blueprint MCAT live online instructor now. Mm -hmm. Looking back at your journey uh, for taking the MCAT, where do you think you found yourself to be successful? What what did you do that helped you be successful uh, on this stupid little test? I think that's a really great question because it's interesting from this perspective. I've been teaching the MCAT now for you know a little over a year. I think I hit the one year mark in May. So thinking back to when I was teaching or when I was teaching and students I've seen now versus when I was studying, I kind of see a big difference because I noticed that the one thing that I did hit on successfully when I was studying was I really implemented a lot of practice into my study plan. And I was really um, just very determined to make sure that I was attacking whatever weaknesses I noticed. And I was very methodical and trying to say like, oh, I noticed that this is going well, this is not going well. And then just meticulously hitting those things that are weaknesses. That was the one thing that I did hit on well, but I've noticed a lot of things as well that I maybe missed out on a little bit when I was studying and maybe did maybe a less efficient way yeah. than I could have. And, and when you say practice, I, I want to clarify for someone listening or watching. I, I, sure. When you say practice, practice does not mean opening up that textbook and just reading more, right? What is What does practice mean to you? Yeah, that's a good, yeah, Ryan, I, I'd love to kind of make that distinction here. So when I'm saying practice here, I mean a type of active practice that's going to be very engaging and it's going to require you to kind of put together all of the skills in a very test-like way. So obviously the MCAT is a long, daunting, standardized test in which you're doing lots of critical reading of potentially dense and convoluted passages. You're answering questions that are requiring you to synthesize information from the passage that you just learned and outside information lots of times. So having practice that's emulating those same skills of critical reading, critical thinking, and then kind of pulling together new information and old information that you should already know is the best way to practice those same skills. Because if you're just you know, glazing your eyes over a textbook or idly clicking through Anki, you know, just hitting space, 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 you know, and stuff like that. You're not pro really testing and flexing those muscles that you use in critical thinking, even though maybe it's helpful for, for some memorization and stuff, but it's not going to get you all the way there to the, the skills that you need for testing. Yeah. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah. So when you're looking at uh, a question I got actually this morning, I was doing Instagram live this morning and a student mm -hmm. asked a question, what is my thought on the diagnostic exam? Should I take it? Should I not? Should I take a diagnostic? Should I just take a full length? What's your thought there? Yeah, I think taking a diagnostic test is a great idea. Kind of um, for what I mentioned there, the, the one thing that I do think I actually did a good job of when I was studying and kind of hit on on my own was that you have to know where you're at. You have to be able to objectively assess at every point in your study plan, but all, especially at the beginning, you know, where do my strengths lie and where do my weaknesses lie? Because mm. that's going to be the roadmap off which you build your study plan. Because if you know, you know, you were, let's say you're a neuroscience major and you know, based on the diagnostic test and based on your knowledge of your own skills, you're knocking it out of the park in psych soch off that diagnostic test but you're lagging a little bit behind maybe in the chemistry and physics section. That's something you have to know as early on as possible to then tailor your study plan to allow you to adequately, you know, put the right amounts of time towards each skill in each different section that you should be addressing because ultimately you want to get the highest score possible. And if you're spending time, I kind of think about it as like ego studying, right? You're great at psych -soch and you just keep on practicing psych -soch over and over again. You're still going to be great at psychosocial, but there's such yeah. a marginal gain that can be made there 
versus another section that you actually have as a weakness that you could improve on, um, that's kind of where the strength of diagnostic is that it diagnoses where those weaknesses might lie. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I think um, I, I was mentioning to the student this morning on the Instagram Live that I, I think uh, the score, all of these scores, when we get something, it's it's a bruise to our ego. And, yeah, and yeah. The, the diagnostic is meant to not be pretty. And so it's one of those things where you just have to go in, take it, and just look at that score and not make it mean anything. It doesn't mean that you're dumb. It doesn't mean that you're not going to do well yeah. in the MCAT. It doesn't mean that you're not going to get into med school. It just means that it's your diagnostic. That's it. Yeah, and I mean, that's such a great point here, Ryan, is that it can be so easy to catastrophize and really to tie in some ways our self-worth into these exam scores, right? It's a little little three-character number that's going to pop up after you click submit. And we can tie that into like, oh, like you said, does that mean I'm dumb? Does it mean I'm smart? The answer is absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Even the people who write the MCAT and place a lot of value on this exam have never in any way said this is a, a measure of intelligence. Yeah. Really, all that's trying to measure is, you know, are there are some critical thinking skills? Have you practiced? It's, it's, it's diagnostic in some ways like that. But this test is just a test. And especially like you've said, for the diagnostic test, this might be the first time you've ever seen a test like this. Yeah. That is not at all indicative of whether you're going to get into medical school or not. I always say this when, when students ask me this question in, in one of our blueprint classes is that, you know, I promise, I promise you when you show up for your medical school interview, they're not going to like run up to you with a microphone and ask you like, Hey, what score did you get on your blueprint diagnostic test? And if it's <laughs> below this mark, I'm automatically going to reject you. They, they I promise you they don't care. All yeah. it is is a tool that should hopefully enable you to see where you're at and what what progress you need to make in order to get uh, past day. Yeah. What? Uh, so so as a Blueprint Live Online instructor, you interact with lots of students taking the MCAT, studying for the MCAT. Besides not doing the practice, doing enough practice, problems, full length exams, etc. What is the the next biggest or the biggest mistake that you see students making day in and day out? I think it, in some ways this is related to the the practice bit, but it largely is not. And it is that I think some students going back to, I think we even mentioned this before we started recording here when we were just chatting, but a lot of students kind of mistake the overall aim of the MCAT because throughout the entirety of your, at least in my undergraduate experience and beforehand, it was really teaching, you know, test by test. We had a unit test, you know, every few weeks, every few months, and you just memorized it and then forgot it. Yep. And that was it. it. The MCAT is nothing like that. The MCAT is a test which takes together three years of undergraduate classes and expects you to have a, a foundational understanding of all of that. Yeah. Personally, maybe, maybe I'm just a bit slow, but personally, <laughs> I was not someone who would go and look at each one of those things once remember it forever and be able to comfortably apply it in these, these passages and these questions that are associated with the passages. So the level of um, restudying and revisiting things constantly and incessantly is so much different than what you see for a test that you might cram for one of those unit tests that we're kind of conditioned for throughout our like, you know, undergrad, high school, et cetera, that a lot of students kind of feel demotivated or demoralized when they've said, Oh, I've, you know, reviewed acid-base chemistry three times now, and I'm still missing acid-base questions. It's like, yep. And, you know, <laughs> you're going to view it four more times, and you're still going to miss it occasionally. That's okay. You're just going to keep relentlessly reviewing it until you get as good as you can with it. That's kind of something yeah. that I think a perspective change a lot of students don't necessarily have going into it that would be helpful. It's, it's interesting, right? Because I think so many people look at this test and you, you talked about um, kind of the ego earlier uh, about studying things that a student is already good at because that makes yes. them feel good. Yes. <laughs> and then yes. we we as humans like to avoid things that cause us pain. And, sure, sure. and the car section causes us pain. We'll jump back mm -hmm. into the car section in the next episode. But um, let's talk about the car section real quick because we're gonna we're gonna finish off passage four and five for the di the blueprint diagnostic here in the next couple episodes. Yes. For the car section specifically, that's not three years worth of of content that mm. we were studying in undergrad. How does a student get better at the car section? The car section is an interesting case. We always, I think to some degree, lots of times there's this temptation to separate it out. There's 
the normal MCAT, you know, the three science sections, and then there's the cars. And I think in some ways that is an app description. It makes sense to divide them just for what you said, mm-hmm. is that the unique thing about cars is there is no outside knowledge that you need to know beforehand. There's nothing that you can do to prepare for yeah. it in a sense. That's not necessarily true. And sometimes the outside sense, knowledge hurts you. It can. It yeah. can. And that's, I think, a unique thing that can make cars very challenging or it can make it very elegant in its simplicity because it is only trained on one thing. The MCAT in general is very, very concerned with testing your critical reading and critical um, reasoning and analysis skills. Yep. Cars is only that. The science is also incorporating in bits of your content knowledge from what you've learned in your years in undergrad. But honestly, that's still only secondary to the critical analysis. Yeah. And the cars, they're completely stripping away that content bit. So really, all that's left then is working on your strategies and your approach to the passages and critical reading and answering questions because there is no content knowledge that can either help you or hinder you in that respect. So I think it's kind of like, the most distilled form of what the MCAT wants to test in some ways. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, before we end here and jump into the car section for our next episode, what, what kind of final words of wisdom, uh, encouragement do you want to give the student thinking about this MCAT and whether they're kind of in the thick of studying or just about to start studying? Oh, I I think the one really big thing that I always try to emphasize early on is that this is a long test. There's going to be days where it's really difficult, some days where it's going really well. But I think the thing that helps the most is being consistent. And being consistent means having a very good idea of when you're going to study, of what you're going to study, and importantly, when you're going to rest as well. I think that's a very neglected piece of it is that sometimes students can get just so wrapped up in it and so gung-ho about studying that they kind of forget to take care of themselves and they forget to make sure that, you know, you, the person who's studying, is in the best possible shape, you know, well-rested, in a good mood, motivated, all those things. Those are, I think, very important to doing well because, you know, if you think about it, the person who's operating on four hours of sleep, who hasn't showered in three days and who's been locked into their bedroom for the last month, like that doesn't sound like someone who's ready to go and drop an incredible MCAT score to me. Yeah. The person needs to have, you know, as much as it would be great if we were MCAT machines, great in the sense that it might sound cool theoretically. Um, we're not MCAT machines. We're people who are studying for the MCAT. So we can't neglect that people part and completely cut out everything else because that people part is what's you know the foundation on which the, the MCAT studier is built. So we need to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. So that way when we step into the room to study for the MCAT, we are as ready as possible, as motivated as possible to maximize that effort we're putting in. Yeah, I think that's, that's a great way of, of putting it. All right, let's 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 end here and we'll jump in a next episode uh, into the Blueprint MCAT Diagnostic, which everyone gets for free by signing up for a free Blueprint MCAT account. Uh, we'll jump into Diagnostic Car Section, Passage 4. <laughs>